Hi, and welcome to episode six of the Wildwood podcast. Today, we're with someone who probably has the best title of anyone I've ever met, John Ford, Head of Bears. It's a great title. Yeah, 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 really really like it. (laughs) Thank you very much. And we should say that your full title is um, Head of Bears and Hoofstock. And Hoofstock, Very important to mention the Hoofstock. Um, I want to start focusing on the Bears, first of all, because um, you're Head of Bears. Yeah. (laughs) That would be a good idea. I don't know, obviously I've only started kind of about 10 months ago with, with Wildwood Trust. I don't know the full story of Fluff and Scruff. Okay. Um, and I think uh, it'd be great to sort of go through um, and just sort of talk about that a little bit. So, yeah. so what happened with Fluff and Scruff and, and how long is it? Been, how long have they been here for, first of all? So uh, Fluff and Scruff, uh, they were from a canned hunting facility in Bulgaria. Mm-hmm. So we're not entirely sure of their origin story. So they did breed some bears in this facility. They did also import a lot of bears. They were, they were actually given a lot as gifts. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, by you know foreign politicians and things like that. So oh, they wow. they donate these strange. bears to the, the hunting facility. Very yeah, is is a strange thing to do. Um, so they uh, the canned hunting facility. I don't know if you know this. Uh, so canned hunting is different to regular hunting in that regular hunting you, you tend to do out in the wild. Mm-hmm. Um, canned hunting, the bears were released into this very very small uh, sort of fenced off area. So they've got nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, and they're, so they're just big, completely exposed and, and shot. So yeah, like, obviously hunting is not. <laughs> just shows how busy uh, John is. That's, that's fine. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll just turn this down. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so they're in a really small, just a small enclosure. Yeah, right? yeah. So a really small fenced-off area, um, and they're they're completely exposed. Do you know that they they can't hide, they they can't run. There's there's no getting away from it, uh, and uh, someone would just point a gun over the fence and and bang. So yeah, just a, a really really horrible facility, um, and. They, we, we don't know the exact numbers. Um, so, so basically what happened was uh, Bulgaria applied to join the European Union. And um, with this, uh, you have to adopt, a, obviously, whole new sets of laws, like European laws. And one of them bans canned hunting, uh, right. which obviously is very, very good. Yeah, yeah. Um, the only issue with this was the, the guys running the facility. They now can't really do anything. So they can't, they're not going to look after the bears because the truth is they don't care about them. They're just, they're, they're just yeah. a source of income um they they can't really release them because they get in trouble for that and they can't shoot them because they're going to get in trouble for that so what they did instead was they actually abandoned the facility they left no one behind they left no food behind no one to look after or care for them and they basically just just left the bears there to to starve to starve yeah wow. yeah not not nice at all um the the story turns upwards where um so Korma Sosha facility is up in the mountains and at the bottom of this mountain is this, this little village. Um, and Bulgaria, um, you know, joining uh, European Union well, and pre-European Union wasn't the wealthiest country, you know. Um, so they didn't have a lot of money. Um, but they noticed that no one was, was travelling up this road to go see the bears anymore. So uh, a couple of them, this much older couple, went up and had a look. Um, and they found all these bears just in these awful conditions of, you know, no one's cleaned them out for ages, no one's fed them for ages, um, just, just not good at all. And... Um, fair play to them they they contacted the charities to get these bears rescued but it, it took a long long time with with red tape involved in that type of thing to get these bears released um and they they took it in turns for um what i believe to be actually probably a couple of years and one of them would go up one day and feed and clean and wow. move around and one of them got the next day and feed and clean um That's and incredible. this this little old couple they they just kept 14 bears alive going 14? through this yeah 14 wow. bears in the facility um, it's incredible and uh, another note as well. So all fourteen bears uh, survived. Really? Yep. So, so they, are they in different um, sort of places? Yeah. Across? So they, they've they've gone. Uh, um, so one actually stayed in Bulgaria. Uh, seven of them went to various parts of the Netherlands, uh, including four to the Bear Forest, which is Renham Zoo, which is amazing. It's actually what Wildwood's enclosure is based off of that concept. Oh, really? Renham yeah. Zoo is that? Sorry. Renham Zoo. Yeah. Okay. Um, or a- our hands is, is how you say it. Uh, and. Uh, two went to Germany, two went to France, and uh, obviously two came here, Fluff and Scruff. Amazing. And that was, so like, must be like almost nine and a half years ago. So this uh, November, November the 5th, which is the worst day you could move an animal on because there's fireworks going off everywhere, yeah. but uh, <laughs> we didn't have a choice at the time. Yeah, um, so yeah, so this November the 5th, it'll be 10 years with us. Mm, wow. um, and we, we can only do estimates because there, there was no records kept by the, um, the hunters. Mm. Uh, we think Fluff and Scruff were in those conditions for 16 years. Um, and there, so the conditions they had, just in case any, anyone watching hasn't seen it, um, it, it was a square concrete pit mm. with, in the middle, was a rectangular concrete hole in the floor. 
um, which was filled up with water, probably by rain, I imagine. Mm. Um, and that was their life. So they had wow. nothing they could forage with. Uh, they had no bedding until they turned up to Wildwood. They didn't know what a bed was, no concept of it. Uh, no toys, nothing to occupy your time apart from, you know, walking around in circles. And um, unfortunately, they developed some bad physical and mental characteristics because of that. Mm. But um, we've done massive, you know, uh, put, sorry, we, we've done a, a massive amount to, mm. to kind of counter that. Yeah. I mean, I don't really want to swear in a podcast. Um, yeah. yeah, that's a <laughs> absolutely horrendous, um, yeah, horrendous experience they must have went through. And I know that you did a lot of rehabilitation and, um, you know, don't want to go into some of the, the negatives too much, but a, a great positive is um, them going into torpor eventually. Yeah. And pro I imagine they probably didn't go into torpor in those circumstances at all. No. So um, they, 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 they wouldn't have had the, um, the, the actual weight capacity to, mm. to go through torpor anyway. Mm. Um, so before we start, um, could you just explain what torpor is just for people? Who, oh yeah. Um, uh, so torpor, it, torpor is, an another phrase for it is calling it semi-hibernation. Mm -hmm. So hibernation, basically uh, you, you go to sleep at the end of the year when you, you've got nice and fat and yeah. it's getting cold and the food is diminishing. And you know, obviously, uh, some of these larger animals and eat, uh, several smaller ones, sorry, but they, the food sources they rely on disappear over winter, mm -hmm. and this is their coping mechanism. So hibernation, you, you you fall into this deep sleep, and then you you could be asleep for you, you could be asleep for five or six months mm -hmm. solidly, um, and with torpor, it's slightly different because you you can you can wake up from a torpor mm -hmm. but still re-enter it. So um, you know, if if Fluff and Scruff are in torpor right now, we could walk into their den. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, say hello to them, say good morning, and they, they'd sort of wake up and look around and they look at you, they growl, they tell you to go away, they definitely <laughs> do that. Um, Just for the record, you don't walk into their den. We don't, no, no. <laughs> we, we leave them completely alone when they're talking. Um, and yeah, and that, that's, sort of the, that's sort of the most significant um, difference between the two. So from, if you have to wake up from a hibernation, um, some people have recorded it taking up to a day. For the, wow. for, for the animal to, to come around to, mm. to so that's a big difference between torpor and yeah yeah here. massive um so torpor is it's just it's not as intense um but this year uh for example fluff and scruff slept for uh, 14 weeks which is the longest torpor they've ever done wow incredible and it's also the heaviest they've ever gone into a torpor it's the heaviest they've ever been so uh you know we they're still we've had them for nine years we're still learning stuff about them and it appears apparently the more weight you have the better you sleep <laughs> I can vouch for so, that as well. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. So they, so that sort of natural behaviour, you know, they're, they're not obviously not going to go through that when they're in those horrible conditions uh, that they had in, in Bulgaria. Um, was was it a shock to you when you you, you found them going into top, or was, or did you have to do a lot of work in order to set the parameters for them to be able to do that? Um, so I quite like the torpor story. So torpor torp is kind of my thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah I really like it. Um, so uh, what happened was. Uh, they'd been with us for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. They just turned like 18 years old, rough, roughly. We don't know for certain. Uh, and then down the bottom of the enclosure, right by where the entrance to the bear bridge is, we have a little man-made sort of like wooden hut thing that they can go into. And Scruff had just spent the last, I think, three months digging out this massive cave, which then collapsed in. So then he, he dug down to the left instead and dug another massive cave. And then you've got Fluff, just randomly one day, I walked past, we saw it, and Fluff was just there, and he was walking over, and he was he biting the grass, or raking it up with his hands, he was doing both, and pulling nettles up, and he was just pulling all of this stuff back into the den. So that's an 18-year-old bear, who, for the first 16 years of his life, he never had a bed, and for the next two, or one and a half, we provided him with a bed. Lovely, massive, great, big, fluffy straw bed. Yeah. Um, He's never had to make his own bed before, and now for no reason at all, he's just gone over and he started doing this. He doesn't know what he's doing at that point. He instinct. did not know what he's doing. Absolute instinct took over. Um, so we watched him for a while, uh, and we just had like conversations between all the keepers. And then, um, yeah, we're just looking at him, and we're like, why is he doing this? He's, he's doing it because he wants to go into that winter sleep. Wow. And it's, uh, I can tell you genuinely, it, it was terrifying. For an 18-year-old rescue bear, not fully restored to health at that point, and you know, to let him go, to sleep which they've never done in their lives mm. yeah it's quite it, it was so scary you were nervous at that point of, of i was very nervous oh, wow. but i was also i think i was probably the one who wanted to do it the most <laughs> but yeah. it's just you know it, it's a completely natural thing for them and you just have to you just Allow have to do, to do it, it sometimes yeah yeah um so that that first time when uh, w what we agreed on actually was we'd wait for the first ground frost okay. which we've we've sort of improved a little bit now because we, we don't wait we just sort of go with them when they want yeah. to do it 
Um, but the first year, um, it, was, it was new for all of us. And we waited for that first ground frost and the second it came, they were both in bed anyway. They were in the same bed, right in the middle of the dens. And uh, we had an agreement. And this is the, this honestly is the most difficult thing for any zookeeper in the world, but they'll tell you this, is uh, we didn't touch the door. We didn't touch the padlock. We didn't have CCTV in the dens that first torpor. Um, and we were just staring through these. We've got these little windows like this. Uh, we're just staring through these windows just for ages. We, we could be stood there for 30, 35 minutes. And all we're looking for is the bear's stomach just to go. Just make sure they're not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wow. So the, the breathing slows down to about once a minute. Once a minute, just yeah. one breath a minute. Yeah, and it's, and it's quite shallow, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, so we, yeah, we, we stood, you know, we're busy people. We've got a lot of animals to go like 40, 45 minutes. We're stood there just trying to stare into this darkness, just seeing if it goes like that. Yeah, you don't want to turn away um, and then miss it. And then you've got to, yeah, <laughs> another 45 minutes. Wow. But the, the first one they did, it, it was eight weeks. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. And Scruff got up mm -hmm. occasionally. He might he'd just like stretch out. Mm -hmm. uh, he'd go have a drink, but he never really left the den. Mm -hmm. And then he'd go back to bed and go to sleep again. You know, you're talking maybe uh three minutes of activity a day something like that yeah fluff i, I don't think he even rolled over <laughs> i don't think he did he just just solidly and that that first eight weeks when they came out of that so they arrived to us as i said earlier they had some um some quite difficult mental problems hmm. when they went through that first eight weeks it cut all of that the stereotypical behavior we were seeing from the the mental problems what uh, were some it, of the mental it, problems so uh, Fluff used to do this thing where he sort of stood up on his back legs hmm. and then he, he we call it like pirouette, like just turn around to the back okay. and then he'd land on his feet and he'd walk off the other direction, which is, it's not nice. It was just hmm. a coping mechanism. He had to do something in those pits to keep his brain working. He, he yeah. had to invent something and that was his. Um, so that's like, it's not nice, but that's actually not too bad because it's not, hmm. there's no self harm. Whereas uh, Scruff used to put his paws on the concrete and he would just drag oh. back and forth and he'd take all the, all the skin off the pads and it they bleed and you know it's just, just that, that, yeah, yeah that w wasn't a nice one um luckily in our enclosure there is there is only actually one tiny slither of concrete so when he got to us any time he wanted to do his poor dragging mm -hmm. he was either doing it indoors on the in the dens which mm -hmm. is ply so it's nice and smooth uh, mm -hmm. or you know in the dirt or mm -hmm. roots yeah. that kind of thing so yeah he couldn't really damage himself and he stopped that behavior now, that's something that yeah. he doesn't do anymore. So that, that first eight week sleep, uh, it cut, uh, it actually, um, Scruff hasn't done that since that eight week sleep. Wow, so it incredible. cut his out completely. Uh, Fluff's little stand and pirouette thing, um, that first time it cut it down 75% in that, in just in that one eight week sleep. Wow, that's incredible. Um, and then by the next one, cut it down even further. And honestly, mm. we, we I, I haven't actually yet, I've yet to see it this year since they've got up, mm. which is amazing. So. But it, you hardly ever see it now. It's normally if we if we shut a gate or something and they want to um, just get into the dens, that's you might see it once or twice there. But the only reason we'd have the gate shut is because we're cleaning or fixing something they've broken because they love to do that or mm. putting some food in, that kind of thing. Nice. And the, the next, obviously, we've got... How many bears? Wild have got five bears. Uh, we've got five in total. Yeah. Five. And Diego's just moved on. We'll talk about Diego yeah, in a little yeah. bit. Off to uh, Jimmy's... Uh, uh, farm and wildlife park, and um, they're doing an incredible job with Diego. Who were the next um, uh, the next bears that came along? Was that Mission Lucy? Mission Lucy, yeah. This was incredibly different for us because we've gone for the, the you know, we had two bears that weren't far off being geriatric at that, at that point. You know, they're considered mm. elderly animals and needing a lot of care. And then Mission Lucy turned up and they were, I think they were roughly two when they got to us. Well, two or just young. under two. Mm. Yeah, so that all of a sudden we've got these two tiny little cubs that have to run around. Um, and they were actually earmarked for Wildwood Devon, but unfortunately the enclosure wasn't ready yet. And that the main part of that was that it was during COVID. So, you know, um, right. Okay. We, we had obviously some maintenance team at both sites cause we have to, cause we have to maintain enclosures and do all that kind of thing. Um, but just getting hold of building supplies was actually quite difficult. Yeah. So, uh, what actually happened then was we decided to build a, a new, we had enough material here to make a new little den for fluff and scruff. Um, and then we gave them that den and they had the whole of the main paddock and then we moved Mission Lucy into Fluff and Scruff's den because it's got a, a much bigger shut off and mm. uh, yeah that was just temporary till we could get their enclosure built. Nice and how are they doing down there? Are they doing tor are they showing signs of torpor as well? Or? Yeah so they had uh, they actually had a, sort of like a partial torpor this year so okay. uh, you wouldn't expect to see it in most bears or it depends 
for every single bear in the world, it's different. It depends what you've eaten the entire year, uh, sure. what the climate has been. There are so many factors that go into it. So right. you, you can't ever say it will be this long for this one and this Got long for you, that yeah. one. Uh, you, you would expect to see around four or five years of age that they would go into a torpor. So Mission Lucy, have just, they've just turned five. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the signs they did, they, they had some quite heavy days sleeping, like days where they almost, you know, they slept the whole day. Wow. So, on. so we're, we were expecting that probably this year they will, they'll do a, a good full top. Nice. And I guess obviously we had, if we talk a little bit about Diego now, because one of the reasons they maybe didn't go into full top was they had that smell of, of Diego that was yeah. there. Um, what, what was Diego's story? I mean, what, what happened and how did Wild would get involved in Diego? Um, so Diego came from, um, I think it was called Orsa Predator Park. Um, and it was actually at one point that place was the, I think it was the biggest zoo in Europe. Wow. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, it was on a mountainside and a company bought out that mountain so they can put a ski resort in. Uh, and I'll, I'll spare some of the smaller details, but uh, basically all the animals had to be out by the 31st of January. Mm-hmm. And the, the team doing so bas- that... Basically going to get euthanized. Yeah. If, if not, yeah. The, uh, the, the team doing that did an absolutely amazing job. I mean, you're, you're talking mm. about... I think they moved... I think with all the small stuff, there's probably more than a thousand animals were moved. Wow, found new homes for unfortunately um i think it was just like diego they were they were just really struggling to find him anywhere so so brown bears are, are actually quite a really healthy population throughout the world mm. but they're one of the most abused animals on the planet so do you know that yeah. there are so many rescues um all over the place so I think, yeah, yeah, it's, it's the problem is, it's just there's a lot of places that are full and, you know, there wasn't anywhere for him to go and it was looking really, really bad for him. Mm. Um, and then we had a lot of discussions and a lot of arguments amongst ourselves about how we could do it. And we decided that down in Devon. So the, the only thing, we couldn't provide him with the biggest enclosure, but we, we had it agreed with Jimmy's Farm Wildlife Park because they were going to build the enclosure. They were going to sort of, um, I think, just speed it up a little bit. And then um, that enabled us so we could we could bring Diego in and just let him torpor with us. And then by the time he woke up from the torpor, he would be ready to go to Jimmy's Farm Wildlife Park, which is exactly what happened. It, worked, it went perfectly to plan, so it's yeah. good. He's doing well there as well. I keep seeing the videos of Jimmy's Farm and Wildlife Park and they're incredible. They're doing a great job over yeah. there. And um, yeah, I think a lot of our keepers were very sad to see him go, though. Yeah, he's um, a lovely bear. He's yeah, he was, really he nice. Such really, an incredible yeah, temperament. Yeah, yeah he, was, he, he was brilliant. Uh, you know, we were lucky enough to go down and, and film some of the... Um, you know him arriving and, and him leaving from Wildwood Devon so I think that was like the first project that I was properly involved in and yeah I've definitely got the bug of working for yeah. uh, working with animals now for sure um, so obviously that's we've mentioned four um, bears and that leaves one bear which is Bocky yep. or Bokey whichever um, you want how do you say it um, I, I actually I kind of use both but mostly I'd say Bocky but I mean it's the, it's the same word it's just how you inflect the O so yeah, yeah. you know both yeah, yeah. are both are correct it's just individual and, and what's what's Bocky's story uh, so Bocky so B- Bocky's family were rescued from a Spanish circus um, and to, to be frank like some quite appalling conditions in a Spanish circus mm. um, and what happened was uh, they so the, the people who rescued the, those bears in Spain they castrated the males and then they put them back in with the group and then they sent them over here and they got they got rescued they had a, a collection over here um port Lim, that they mm-hmm. could go to unfortunately the people who did it didn't realize that uh once you castrate a male everything can still work for a little bit okay um so they put them back together slightly too soon right and that's actually where Bucky came from so Bucky was a little bit of a didn't surprise so um, Bocky, so his whole family went to Port Lim, and that's actually where Bocky was born. Mm-hmm. So he would, I suppose, it technically would be a Spanish brown bear, but just one that was born over here. Yeah. Um, and uh, obviously, the only other thing with that is he he was now born into a, a family group because mm-hmm. that Port Lim have designed their enclosure specifically for that group. Sure. But Dad is in that group, and Dad isn't allowed to be around for the cub rearing. Right. So it does it does actually work from time to time. You can you can manage it in captivity. You know if you keep enough food around and there's enough mm-hmm. territory and all that kind of thing. And um, Port Lim, like full credit, they did an amazing amazing job with him. Um, and they did try to to mix him in with the family, but unfortunately they just weren't really having it. And um, the signs weren't good. No, and yeah. there were there were two older brothers there as well. And you know I think it was just a bit too many. So um, they they tried a few times. <coughs> Excuse me, but unfortunately Bocky just he, he couldn't be with them mm. um the other problem as well was uh, his mum was wanting to spend more and more time with the family group 
as right. you know, it's what she was doing for uh -huh. years. Um, so Bocky was just getting left on his own for sort of a, a longer and longer period of time. Mm. Uh, so I had actually been there to meet him. Lovely, lovely little bear. And uh, I knew that we had uh, two males here and we collaborated with Port Lim on actually bringing him here to mix him with fluff and scruff. Um, and yeah, that's what we did, brought, brought mean, him to us. How nervous were you letting Bocky in with fluff and scruff? That must've been a really difficult so, and exciting at the same time. No, so I, I can tell you this. So um, when mi mixing Bocky with fluff and scruff was actually, uh, it was my idea to do it when we did. And it was only about two weeks after I got promoted to head of bears and hoofstock. Oh, so, no, so no pressure then. No pressure at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, I I won't lie to you. I was yeah, I was very. I was I was just nervous because you know up until that point in your career there was always someone above you who do do this and that, and then yeah. all of a sudden it fell to me. And, um. I, yeah. I was I was completely confident that it would work. It was just yeah. Well, yeah, you were a right. nervous thing to I do. Mean, yeah. It seemed to be. I mean. Is it is it um, Scruff and Bocky? You've got that sort of yeah. Scruff, Scruff and Bocky are like best mates. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah really, really good. Yeah, and um, I think it's important to talk about um, Bocky's had a little bit of a, a difficult time yep. over the last couple of weeks. Um, it's kind of an incident that I, I was here at, at the park at the time, and um, I think he fell over and he, what we believe, I think, is he, he had a seizure. Yeah, is what we're thinking. Um, how how is he doing at the moment? Um, obviously, all of our members are, are desperate to know. You know how he is. Yeah, I don't blame him. He's literally he's the best little bear. He's yeah, brilliant. exactly. Um, so he, yeah, he was. He was. We noticed some symptoms of illness um, before that event. Okay. Um, and we actually had the our, our vet, really good vet. He came in and he, um, he checked him over and did all kinds of tests and stuff. But unfortunately, um, I think it was just the next day. Yeah, he just overexerted himself and, yeah, like you said, what, what we believe to be a seizure. Uh, since then, we've put him on a range of different medications, just uh, little things to try. We're just we're, we're keeping a really close eye on him. Wildwood is getting an incredible reputation for its work with you know rescuing brown bears. Um, I always like asking this. I think I asked this to Mark. Is there any bears in the, new bears in the future? Um, we we were actually told that our enclosure could hold five bears, um, okay. but we we wouldn't want to push it to the max. Yeah. So the, but the, yeah, there, there would always be room for maybe one more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's always um, always room for one more. And hopefully maybe you know maybe we could extend the enclosure one day or, or build a secondary enclosure and mm. and house more. I think that'd be fantastic. I mean the more rescues we can do from you know helping these bears absolutely um, yeah yeah yep. the better and they do need it yeah exactly so we've obviously done bears a lot i don't want to we, we had uh, done on a previous podcast and we did bison quite a yep. lot on there but obviously you are head of hoofstock um i know you're incredibly excited about the two new bulls that arrived yep. how are they doing they're doing really well actually yeah they're yeah. doing really well um they've put on a little bit of weight and they've grown a bit taller a bit yep. more muscly um and the confidence actually confidence has gone through the roof so the first uh the first couple of days, they, they would come quite close to us, but they'd keep a bit of distance. Mm. And literally now, I mean, we've only had them for a number of weeks, really. But uh, now, yeah, they'll come right up to you. Incredible. Right up to you, looking for food. That's brilliant. And how, how did you get involved in this? How did you get involved in being a keeper? Uh, so I always knew I wanted to work with animals. Okay. And it was actually when I was studying in college, I was studying uh, animal care and management. And a friend of mine, Nick, just he actually rang me up one day and he said, there's a job going here. Um, he worked at Chessington Zoo at the time. Okay. Uh, and he just said, do you want me to get you an interview? And I did, went along and interviewed and I just sort of fell into it from that point of view. Fell into it and just ran with it. Yep. <laughs> Incredible. Um, I think I could talk to you about the bears for literally hours and hours and hours, but we do, I know you're a very busy man and you want to get back to Bocky and, um, but we have a little tradition where we ask um, our members and our followers on social media to, to DM in with some no. questions. <laughs> um, so I've got a couple of questions yeah, uh, no that problem. I'm going to ask you. And we're very happy to announce again that this is uh, sponsored by Veloso. Um, Veloso Tours is one of the UK's leading specialist tour operators to Latin America, India, Indonesia and China. Veloso Tours share our commitment to ethical practices and animal welfare in all destinations they specialise in. With over 25 years experience, they offer unique, personalised and authentic tailor-made holidays for couples, solo travellers, small groups and multi-generational families. Their ethos is to provide an authentic, in-depth experience of the local life, history, incredible wildlife and the culture of each destination, with local expert guides to join you on your adventure. And there's some good news, Wildwood members receive a 5% discount when booking through Veloso. Simply quote your membership number and yeah, you'll get that discount. So John, we have a couple of questions here. Um, we normally do three. Yep. Um, so if you can pick one and hand it to me, I will read it out for you. Go for this one. What's the most touching interaction you've witnessed between animals? Um, oh, 
I know I know I talk a lot about bears, but it, it, it genuinely it has to be the moment where we let Bocky in, in with Scruff and they started playing and wrestling and hugging. Just instantly. All that. Yeah, because we, we'd had this suspicion for a little while now that Fluff possibly might be a little bit older than Scruff and uh, he didn't really want to play that much. And you, you could sometimes see Scruff kind of egging him on. They do this when they want to play yeah. and Fluff will pull away. So the, the day we let Bocky out and, and they, uh, I mean, they must have been play fighting for six hours. Wow. Honestly, yeah. Really? Yeah, it was amazing. It was oh, amazing. Incredible. Brilliant. Okay, question two. That's a great Good. answer. This one? I love how you like rummaged around there as if you were getting the right one. Oh, this is interesting. Um, how has technology changed the way you work with wildlife? Um, so we do uh, we do quite a lot of actually like the, I find the, the den monitoring really really helpful like through the CCTV. Um, so if, oh, use bears for example again, but with fluff and scruff now we don't have to stand at that window staring in for you know half an hour anymore just to make sure they're okay. We actually have uh, low light CCTV cameras in the dens that we can we can actually monitor them. Um, we ha actually have an app. I can see the bears yeah, on my phone. IT uh, Laura just literally did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so incredible. just uh, stuff like that. It's just just really really helpful. Mm, fantastic. Yeah, I guess there's some good like monitoring from home that you can do if you're not if you've yeah, got a yeah. day off and you. Yeah, if you're worried about them or if you want to check on anyone, you can just do it. You're just like locked on that completely now. Yep. <laughs> I can imagine. Bear TV. Bear TV. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, and this one. And the final one. So if you could have any wild animal as a guest on our podcast, which one would it be and what? Assuming that they can talk, obviously. Yeah. Um, ooh. We go for Fluff, I think. Yeah. Go for Fluff, I think. Because he's a little bit more, yeah, bit he's more older and a bit wiser. A little and bit older, yeah. It would just be great to know how he perceives us and what grumpier. we're doing here. And yeah. Um, yeah, just to ask him what he thinks of Scruff because he seems to love him. So, yeah, that'd be really nice. <laughs> that'd be good. Getting get to the head of Scruff, I think. That's a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. Brilliant. Well, John, you have, an, you know, you do incredible work and all your team do incredible work. So, you. you know, thank you for the work that you do with Wildwood. And I know that you're a busy guy. So, yeah, I'm sure we'll see you on a future podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much.